the opponent mine hardware kit. Let's have a quick look at what's inside. First of all, there are two Metron blocks. These are blocks that you stand the horse's foot on. This goes to the ground. This is where a horse is stood. There's calibration features on the sides. Two of those, so both feet can be at the same height at the same time. Here is the opponent cam, which is a way to put in a smartphone and take excellent photos of the foot. Uh, this is an alternate opponent cam. We call it the floor cam. We use it mostly for hind feet, where we don't want to put the foot on the block. It's too hard to, so this is Got a mirror way down low, close to the ground. Almost as good as the real opponent cam. Then this is a so-called auto scaler. Uh, this can be used to scale any part of the horse, put it in the image, and we can scale it. There's also metal inside for radiographs. Uh, we also have a stand. You can put the auto scaler on a stand to make it easier to stand next to the hoof. This is an alternate way. We use this with the floor cam for hind feet very often. Uh, this also comes with a strap velcro strap we can put through here and then you could strap it to the horse's leg or any place else uh, on the animal where you want to get a scale marker for phot photography or radiography. These are so-called finger clips and there's alternate size finger rings that you slide them on. This is for the solar photo of the hoof. You hold the hoof, you put this on your finger and you have this scale marker in the plane of the hoof and that's used for photographing, photographing the sole of the foot. And finally, this is the so-called mini router. It's a little router. It generates a Wi-Fi network. So you can go to any barn, any place on the road. You don't have to ask people for a local Wi-Fi. You can bring your own Wi-Fi with you. And this connects the smartphone app to Metron running on a PC. So it sends the images directly to the PC. You don't have to go up to the cloud or any of that stuff. And then there's a so-called background board. This is just a white neutral board you hold behind the block so when you image the foot in a photograph, you have a nice clean background. And on one side of the board are instructions telling you some of the things I've just said, showing you the best way to position the foot, and so forth. So all that is what's in the hardware kit, and a nice carrying case so you can bring along with you. Unfortunately, radiographs and photographs that we often see look something like these examples, where they're not taken uh, with a very good uh, positional accuracy, they're not taken on a block which has a calibration marker built in, or for the photos, there's no scale marker. Um, so all of these uh, are difficult to use for anything quantitative. Even an image taken on our block can be taken incorrectly. This is a very typical thing that we see. The camera here is too high. If you can see the top surface of the block, you've held the camera too high. and We're not going to get a good lateral image where we can measure angles and so forth. And when you're paying a lot of money to get radiographs taken, uh, you would hope the practitioner would take care to do things in the best possible way to get a measurable image. Um, in contrast, these are the sort of images we want to get. We want to get nice true laterals or true DPs um, with a calibration scheme in place so we can make measurements. Um, this is really what we're after and what the whole industry should head towards. And if you look at all the blocks in the market, with the exception of our block, which we'll talk more about, um, all these blocks have nose calibration markers built in. Um, maybe one exception, the one uh, from Gene Ovenek that you strap onto the hoof, uh, has some metal balls in it for calibration, so that's a good thing. But all these other blocks, some of which are very expensive, very fancy, some from Europe, uh, no calibration concerns at all. The block. Uh, has uh, photographic scale markers on three sides. The Metron block is used both for radiographing and photographing the hoof. Let's take a look at how the block works. Here's a ruler placed in the center line of the block. If we use a scale marker on the side of the block, as some practitioners do, then that which is the green line here, and we use that to scale the image, we'll see that an error is introduced because on the ruler clearly 5 inches is being measured with the blue line but the software is saying 4.33 so there is an error and that's just because the scale marker is not in the same plane as the ruler same distance away from the camera what the Metron block does is it uses a unique 4 point scaling system by knowing 
two scale markers in two different depths from the camera, we can compute exactly a scale marker for the center line of the block. And now we see that the blue line, which is 5 inches on the ruler, is indeed measured as 5 inches in the software. And as a consequence, um, you know, it makes a difference. Uh, in image A, there was a ruler on the a camera facing side of the block used to calibrate the image. And in image B, we used the Metron block. And you'll see that the uh, method A underestimates the uh, height of the heel. So if you were a farrier and you're going to trim down the heel and someone told you to take off a quarter inch, you know, you'd like that to be an accurate measurement. So this is the exact same photograph, just calibrated two different ways. And uh, in B, it's a, a true height that's being measured. And it has radiographic scale markers built inside metal, metal parts. So if the Metron block is used properly, it enables our software to do automatic radiographic calibration. Here you see an image of a foot. In picture B, you see the uh, scale marker being found in the block automatically in our software. And in picture C, several measurements of the foot are made and linear measurements like thickness of sole and P3 descent uh, are accurate because of the scaling of the block. Now, we did a little test here just to show this off again and prove to ourselves and everyone else that this is working well. We planted two small BBs in this uh, dried cadaver leg, one at the tip of P3 and one at the center of the articulation of the coffin joint. Then we measured the physical distance between those two BBs with a ruler, and it's almost exactly three and one eighth inch. Okay, and then we measured that uh, in our software uh, using the block to calibrate the image and the measurement we got is 3.12 inches which is almost exactly 3 and 1 8 inch. So uh, that's showing you that uh, the calibration is working and is accurate. Now it's accurate in a plane directly in the center line of the hoof and that's where this uh, dried model was split so this is all uh, making sense. And just to make the point a little bit stronger, here we show some other things. Um, the red cross shows you where the X-ray central beam was located on the image. And on the right-hand side, we put an extra block in so that the foot was much higher. It was like a double high block. Uh, the generator was the same. And uh, so the image changes, but you see the length measure between those points stays exactly the same. So uh, length measurements are calibrated in the entire plane does not matter where the x-ray generator central beam is located to get accurate distances between points. And in this example, we altered the setup distances, how far the generator is from the foot and how far the x-ray detector panel is from the foot. Um, the details are all in these numbers here, but basically no matter how we located things, the measurement in the software between those two points was always accurate and was the same. You can see in the lower right hand image the image is physically bigger on the screen because there was more magnification in the image but despite that the software does the calibration and we get an accurate measurement um, for that distance. Uh, the first thing to know about the block is to put it the right way on the floor. The black rubbery surface goes down on the floor. The next thing to know about it is there are no holes in one end. That's the heel end. The holes are on the toe end here. So uh, if we're placing a foot on the block, the perfect way to place it is like this. Toe at the toe end where the holes are. Heel at the heel end where there's no holes. And we want to place the foot as best we can so the center line of the hoof lies along the center line of the block. And the widest part of the foot lies at these markers on the block. So this would be perfect uh, placement of a hoof on the block. Of course the hoof looks more like this. So we'd place the hoof like this. Now, if the hoof is, is large and hangs a little bit over the edges of the block, that's actually okay. That's no problem. Don't worry about it. Just get it centered on the center line of the hoof and you're, you're good to go. Here's how you use the opponent cam. Okay, the hoof is on the block, positioned the right way. Uh, your smartphone is in the opponent cam cradle. Uh, there's an optional light on the opponent cam. If you press and hold the button on the back of this light, will light up in a dark barn. That's very helpful to illuminate the block. In the app, we go in to take a photo and we want to remember to use the background board. We really want to block out all the crazy background stuff that you would see behind the hoof. And then on the opponent cam, we use pinch zoom and you zoom in 
until you've got about at the fetlock. So we're cutting off about at the fetlock. You don't want to be zoomed in more than that. You don't want to be zoomed in much less than that. And then you position the opponent cam. If you look through the opponent cam at the image of the block and look at the position of the black screw heads at the base of the deep wells, you'll see in this case they're not centered in the circles. And as you slide the opponent cam back and forth, you can track how they move. Here they're also not symmetrically centered. You've gone too far that way. So by looking at those, you can get the opponent cam lined up. Here we move it back. And now those two dots are pretty symmetric in the circles. So that's one way to line up opponent cam. And when you're ready to go, you click, take the photo. And if you like it, you say use photo and it gets transmitted to the Metron software. So that's how you use the opponent cam. One more thing to point out is how far away should the opponent cam be from the block. The rule is not too close. Try and place it about a meter that is about a yard away from the block and then zoom in. This is the same exact hoof and actually these two images were taken 13 seconds apart. Nothing has changed except that the camera was very close in the left image and the camera was far away about two meters on the right image and you see how the look at the hairline of the hoof this looks like a different hoof that's just some photographic distortion because on the left hand image we were too close to the block we can go ahead and measure those things and we see a very different height up to the hairline at the highest point here so you want to remember always keep your camera at least a meter away from the foot and then zoom in don't get really close to the hoof and zoom out you'll make a bad image um. If you're using floor cam, you use it like this. The block is not used. The foot, usually it's a hind foot, is on the ground. You place the Metron autoscaler at the center of the toe. That is, this plane where the scale marker is should be in the center line of the hoof. So you don't, don't place it out here, don't place it back here. Place this center at the toe. Okay, And then using the floor cam, we position, we zoom till we cut off at the fetlock. You'll be seeing a lot of the ground uh, ahead of the hoof in the image. That's okay. We'll crop it later in the software. And then you take a picture. Okay. And as mentioned, floor cam, not quite as accurate as using the block and the opponent cam, but it's a good uh, way to do the hind feet. The Metron block is designed to be at a good height for most modern small portable x-ray generators used with the horse. Why is a block needed anyway? Why do you have to put the horse's foot on a block to take an x-ray? Now the reason is the, the beam, which I've shown here with the red lines, the beam from the x-ray generator has a so-called central beam, but the beams also diverge from a point source. And as you see in the lower red tracing on this diagram, uh, the, the lower red tracing, which just hits the outside lateral hoof wall, uh, will image on the film or the detector lower than the top of the block. So this diverging is why you have to have the foot up on a block. Otherwise, you can never image the real bottom of the foot. Uh, and it's because the x-rays uh, diverge from a point source. So this is a POSCOM generator. And uh, the central beam of this is shooting across. And we're hitting the hoof uh, a little bit above the, the top of the block, but uh, in a good spot, kind of near the navicular bone, which is often considered standard practice. This demonstration shows when we misalign the block relative to the generator pointing direction that the Palmer angle measurement uh, remains fairly good even over a very wide range of misalignment. It's pretty easy just by eye to get things within 5 or 10 degrees and here we're going plus or minus 15 degrees. So point the generator perpendicular to the block but it's not crucial. Uh, if you have other generators, more old-fashioned one, it'll also work fine. So generally, um, the height of the block is good for these small generators. Uh, sometimes you might have an older generator or a big generator in a clinic. And in that case, we offer something uh, that we call the block riser kit. This has two half inch boards in it, one for each block and a new set of screws. And you can add this to the bottom of the block and thereby raise the block by half an inch. And that might help you for certain generators. And when you do that, you also can get these uh, extenders for the opponent cam and put them in and that will raise the height of the opponent cam by a half an inch. So it'll be again at the right height for that, that new block. Regarding the height of the block relative to the generator, in this demonstration the red cross shows you where the central beam of the generator was located as we shoot 
a series of many, many radiographs. And in each one, we measure the palmar angle. And what this shows is that this particular measurement, pretty robust to differences in the height of the generator um, and the height of the block. So many people worry about this more than they should. Things can be uh, quite robust.